Welcome back everyone. I will start over from where I had left off in the last lecture. We are going to continue with a single price monopolist's output and price decision. The table that you can see over here is table number 12.1 from your books. You have already seen the first half of this table a, a couple of lectures back. You have the price of per haircut given in the first column. You have the corresponding quantity demanded in this column. This is your total revenue. Total revenue is price multiplied by the quantity of output sold. And this is your marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is the difference in total revenue when your output increases by one unit. This part of the table we have already covered two lectures back. This part is new. Okay, now this is a hairdressing salon. Remember, the salon, this salon has a monopoly status. When the price of one haircut was 20 pounds, there was no demand for haircut. Hence, the total revenue was zero. When the price of haircut was lowered from 20 to 18 pounds, quantity of haircuts demanded per hour was one. Total revenue was 18. Marginal revenue this difference in total revenue, 18. This is how we find it. So this is how we calculated the first, um, calculated total revenue and marginal revenue from the given information in the first and second columns. We're now going to look at total cost, marginal cost, and profit. Total cost. The total cost column lists the corresponding costs for producing each and every single output listed in this column. Okay. Now, in order to provide zero haircuts, the total cost for this hairdressing salon was 20 pounds. In order to provide one haircut an hour, the total cost was 21. In order to provide two haircuts an hour, the total cost was 24. So on and so forth. For the third haircut, 30. For the fourth haircut, cost is uh, 40. For the fifth haircut, the cost is 55. So this is your total cost column. Okay. What we will now do is find the marginal cost. The same way we found the marginal revenue. Marginal cost is the additional cost that is incurred when output increases by one unit. This is the change in your total cost which is brought about by an increase in output by one single unit. So total cost when it increases from 20 to 21, the marginal cost is 1. It is 21 minus 20. When sale of output increases by one more unit, and your total cost increases from 21 to 24, your marginal cost is the difference between 24 and 21, that is 3. When your quantity of output increases further from 2 to 3, your total cost increases from 24 to 30, and your marginal cost is the difference between the two, 6. Marginal cost for the fourth output, for the production of the fourth output, 30 minus 40 is 10. And for the fifth output, 40, and uh, the difference between 40 and 55 is 15. So you have your marginal cost over here. You find marginal cost the same way you find marginal revenue. Next up, we have profits. Profits is the difference between your total revenues and your total costs. So we are going to take a look at the total revenue column and the total cost column. Profits, total revenue minus total cost. When total revenue was zero and total cost was 20, your profits were zero minus 20. So you made a negative profit of minus 20 or a loss of 20. When your total revenue was 18 and your total cost was 21, you made a loss of three pounds, 18 minus 21. When your total revenue is 32 and your total cost is 24, 
Your total profit is 32 minus 24, 8. When your total revenue is 42 and your total cost is 30, your profit is 12. When your total revenue is 48 and your total cost is 40, your total, uh, your total profit is 80. When your total revenue is 48 and your total cost is 40, your total profit is 8. When your total revenue is 50 and your total cost is 55, you're again making a loss of 5 pounds. So from over here, from the profits that we just found, you can see that profit was maximized at a level of output that is equals to 3 and at the price 14. This firm, this hairdressing salon is making maximum profits at when, when it charges 14 pounds per haircut and provides three haircuts an hour. We're now going to look at the graphical explanation of this. We're now going to graphically look at the monopoly's output and price. The figures that you can see over here on the right, this is figure 12.4 from your books. Panel A shows total revenues and total cost curves for this monopoly firm, for the hairdressing salon. And figure B shows demand curve, margin revenue curve, and cost curves for this hairdressing salon, for this monopoly firm. If we look at panel A, the first diagram, the top diagram, you can see that on the horizontal axis, we have the quantity of haircuts, and on the vertical axis, we've got total revenues and total costs. The total revenue curve is this. This is based on the table that we have just looked at. The total cost curve is this. Okay. When zero outputs were being sold, that means when zero haircuts were being sold an hour, the total cost was 20. So your total cost curve starts from 20 and it gradually rises like this. Remember, profits, profit is the difference between your total revenue and your total cost. And remember how this firm's profits were maximized when it was selling three units of output and charging a price of 14 pounds. That happens over here at three units of output. The difference between the firm's total revenue and the total cost is the maximum. The firm's total revenue and total cost difference is maximum when it provides three haircuts an hour. So at this point, the firm is maximizing its difference between total revenue and total cost, and hence it is maximizing its profits. Economic profit for the firm is equal to 12 pounds, which is 42 minus 30. 12 pounds per haircut. If we now look at the demand curves, marginal revenue curves, and the cost curves for this firm, we are basically looking at figure B, the diagram at the bottom panel. You can see that the blue line over here is the demand curve of the firm. The marginal revenue for a single price monopoly is lower than the price. Hence, marginal revenue curve lies below the demand curve. We are not drawing the negative portions anymore, and you know why. Because a monopolist operates in the elastic part of the demand curve. So, the point where marginal revenue becomes negative, a monopolist does not operate over there. So, we do not have to draw the negative parts in this diagram anymore. Okay? So, this is your marginal revenue. The blue line is your demand curve. The red curve that you can see over here is your marginal cost curve and the blue curve over here is your average total cost curve. We know that every single profit maximizing firm produces a level of output where MR equals MC. This is the profit maximizing level of output. So all firms maximize profits by producing output where MR equals MC. Over here you can see for this monopolist, this is the MR curve and this is the MC curve. So profit maximizing level of output occurs over here at 
three haircuts, right, over here. If we find the corresponding point from the top panel in the bottom panel, you can see that this is your profit maximizing level of output. This happens where MR is equals to your MC. For a monopoly, price exceeds MR, right? The MR curve lies below the price line or the demand curve. So price also exceeds MC. Since MC is equals to MR and price exceeds MR, that means price also exceeds MC. How do we find the price? We find the profit maximizing level of output. From there, we find the corresponding level of output, which is 3. We go all the way up to the demand curve and we trace the price. The price this monopolist is charging for every haircut at the profit maximizing level of output. This monopolist is charging 14 pounds at the profit maximizing level of output, which is 3. A monopoly charges a price that exceeds marginal cost. So your marginal cost and your marginal revenue is over here, somewhere over here, right? But a mon the monopolist is charging 14 pounds, which is way above that. And the monopolist is making a profit equals to 12 pounds because the total cost for, per haircut, the average total cost per haircut is 10 at a level of output 3 and the price per haircut at that level of output is 14. So the difference between the price that you're charging and on average the cost that you're incurring is your profit. So you are making a profit of 12 pounds. 3, your level of output is 3. And per output, you're making a profit of 14 minus 10, which is 4. So 4 times 3, 12. Okay, this is your economic profit. The shaded region over here represents an economic profit. Now, if you can remember from perfect competition, under competitive market structure, if a firm is making a profit, new firms enter the market and absorb that profit, right? However, a monopoly is charging a price that is greater than the MC and is still making an economic profit. And a monopoly may continue making that economic profit in the future. How? Because barriers to entry into the monopoly market prevents new firms from entering. As a result, the monopoly can hold on to its monopoly, its monopoly status and thus the monopoly can continue making a profit for the first foreseeable future.